This continuation of the instructional companion on vehicle dynamics falls under the major topic dynamics and vibrations which contains the following five chapters properties of solid bodies, kinematics, kinetics which is where this is going to come from, mechanisms and power transmission systems and vibrating systems. The chapter on kinetics covers the many topics shown However, we're going to be in just the uh, section motion of rigid bodies. We've been looking at a problem there and we needed to finish up with uh, some fairly major um, discussions about how the MERM went about the solution to this problem. In what I'm now calling Vehicle Dynamics Part 1, uh, the discussion really was about level road uh, motion, acceleration or deacceleration. I talked about what else was in uh, that um, particular sections there. We don't have to get there. The example we were looking at is this truck that weighed 5,000 pounds. It was skidding along. You were given an, an a deacceleration of 15 feet per second squared. You were asked for the coefficient of sliding friction and the forces at A and B, the friction and normal, and we went through that. We drew the following free body diagram, the, uh, the weight uh, of 5,000 pounds, or W, the two normal forces, the two friction forces. But what is missing here uh, that is on the free body diagram in the MERM is this uh, sort of inertia force, MA, and it uh, appears to be in the opposite direction you might think about it. So uh, that's where we're going to go. But uh, all of these problems, uh, again, to review, uh, look at three equations of motion, some of the forces, Newton's second law, some of the forces in the x direction, y direction are the accelerations. Here, uh, there's only an x, acceleration or deceleration, uh, a sub y is equal to zero, and there is no angular uh, acceleration, so essentially the sum of the uh, moments is, uh, is sort of a statics, but you must pick uh, the right point. Uh, either a, the center of gravity is always a good choice, and that's noted by p p um, point C. Uh, you can fi a fixed point, but there's no such thing here. Um, but how, how did uh, the author uh, of the MERM uh, take moments, and that's what we're going to go to here. We got down to the last slide, which had this uh, moment uh, that was shown, uh, which we had to, one, assume what the direction was. There was no, no set of coordinate systems, but counterclockwise appears to be the direction that was made positive. Uh, 14 NB, which really needed to be 14 feet, like we have 6 feet here, uh, taking moments uh, at uh, point A which is the contact point of the, of the uh, rear wheel, which again for us is not a valid point. Uh, he has this 3 feet times this quantity here, which is really the mass, 5,000. He's got a weight up here with an F and a, a mass here, or pound mass here with his G sub C. This is a famous G sub C, which I don't warm up too well. Again, the uh, slug versus pound mass, we'll go over that. Uh, he just needs to take 5,000 divided by 32.2, and you'll get uh, 155.28 slugs. But uh, what's striking is you've got a minus sign out here, which is the direction um, that uh, that particular moment uh, would be from the, uh, the diagram. But what about the minus sign that's in here? Uh, that doesn't make any sense either up here. So uh, what is going on? And uh, as I mentioned at the end, what he's um, looking at is the following. Let me write that to save some YouTube time. And uh, what uh, you see there in the MERM is what is referred to as D'Alembert's principle. Uh, he did a lot of things, but one of this was not his finest hour, in my impression. He came up with this concept of dynamic equilibrium. He took um, Newton's second law, F equals MA, and took uh, the MA to the left-hand side and uh, essentially turns dynamics problems into statics problems. Well, sounds like something. Everybody kind of loves statics way more than they like dynamics. That sounds like a good idea. But the problem is, is that you have uh, one, he calls this an inertial force. There is no such thing. 
Okay, there is no such thing as an, a lot of people talk about inertial force, but it doesn't exist. It is merely m times a, and that uh, term has units of force because we make it have units of force by the units we choose uh, for mass. But I love the the sentence is probably put as well. It's probably the highest indictment against this whole principle. Um, but to, to quote the uh, MERM, it says, since the inertial force acts to oppose changes in motion, it is negative in the summation. Try to remember that under pressure. No, no, I'm very familiar with this. Uh, a lot of folks warm up to this kind of thing, but um, uh, this might, you have enough problems with um, acceleration and deacceleration as it is to add an additional negative. Uh, where well, you can know where that's going to go, and it does, in fact, um, almost. I can't teach this. Um, F equals M A. What else can you get to do? We got some of the force in X equals M A X. You got some of the force in Y equals M A X. You got some of the moments about these particular points, and there's always center of gravity is equal to I alpha, and you're done. You don't need this sort of crutch, I think, uh, to try to try to make uh, dynamics problems appear to be as easy as uh, statics. They are not, and uh, almost invariably, people that go about this uh, get the wrong answer uh, quite often. Um, there is actually a follow-on problem in the MERM, which I will do another instructional companion on, in which this, uh, this particular principle uh, does not serve uh, the MERM well. That's the, the best I can do. I guess the, uh, Donald Lumsfeld says I have a minimum of high re regard for that, for that approach here. Okay, so um, a big, big problem with doing this. So I've, uh, in the... Um, solution or in the presentation for Vehicle Dynamics 1, you see what we present there, uh, follow along with that. I'd like to leave you, leave this uh, particular instructional companion by generalizing the problem that we had here. Don't use the 3 feet and the 6 feet and the 8 feet and summarize the answers so you can just uh, jump in and use them in the MEP exam. Okay, so let me do that on the next slide. Okay, let's take our uh, truck or car or whatever we want to. Uh, we'll still call this uh, A and B. Uh, point C will be the center of gravity. And let's locate it with just A and B. And then the, the total length is L, so that uh, L is equal to A plus B. Let's call the uh, height from the ground up to C H. Uh, we, do, we are looking at a skidding problem. Uh, velocities to the right, skidding uh, deacceleration back to the left that you would either no, uh, either you're going to know it or and find mu k, or no mu k and find it, and we'll write that out here. So what you have really is um, uh, really an expression between a and um, the um, mu k and uh, gravity, and then the n a and n b. And let's write, but we we did one of those, but let's generalize both of them. Okay, the first result we came up with was really the acceleration is equal to minus mu kg. We were asked for mu k, so we rearranged that and had it minus a over g, where a is going to be given to you in a negative value. So uh, you could be given mu k and want to know what is the deacceleration. Well, you've got that solution right there. Uh, multiply mu k by times g and you're done. Okay, or if you're looking for mu k like in this problem, take the acceleration you're given, which is negative. Take the other negative, divide by g, and you got that. Okay? What about the two normal forces? Okay? Well, if we, uh, again, use a, b, and h, now, of course, uh, just <laughs> realize that, of course, we've got acceleration uh, is an a for that. So you may go back in. You may not warm up to a and b and l, but that's typical in a lot of problems uh, um, uh, in uh, mechanics uh, to do just that. So the one we did in, in the... Um, Vehicle Dynamics 1, we found NB first, uh, mu k times 3 feet, which is really H, uh, plus 6 feet, which is A, divided by L, which was 14. Uh, if you go back and, and solve for NA instead of NB, substitute that in, you'll get B minus mu k H over L. And I worked that out, and you get the same answers. And, of course, the two of them better add up to W. So you've got the entire solution here. You don't have to go through it. You've got it in front of you. Um, you don't have to work through it, but I, what I 
do with the instructional companions is now you um, have nice warm fuzzies with these. You now know what they are, you know where they came from, and now you can just um, substitute in the information there and away you go. Still might be a uh, after, this particular one probably is an afternoon PM mechanical problem, uh, but as I said, it, um, it's a classic problem, and uh, we got to talk about uh, this um, problem with um, inertia force dynamic equilibrium. So uh, we're going to need to correct that in, in, the, in a future instructional companion, another MERM problem. Uh, so we'll do that another day. Hope this, uh, hope this helps. Again, I invite you to visit my website as part of your exam preparations.